Okay, I'd make, I figured I'd make a short little video. I'm uh, touching up some 3 8 end mills, sharpening the, the flutes. You can see, I don't know if you can see it, but it's, it's got a lot of chips here on, on these, down in this area. So, um, this is actually the first time I'm kind of using my setup that I made. It's just a cheapy little cross slide that I bought that uh, China made. I had to uh, cut the I cut the top plate or the table flat. Um, I resnugged all of the screws so there's no slop because basically all I'm using is my Y axis right now. And uh, other than that, it's the same setup I had. Uh, cup wheel on there, and I have a. It's just a cheapy 12 volt uh, uh, motor that I bought, and I have a 12 volt um, power unit back there. That just flip it on, and so we're going to sharpen some 3 8 end mills. So. Um, I basically have it already set up. The finger <coughs> holds the flute so that it's straight across and it comes in and touches the wheel at five degrees. So all I need to do is load this end mill up. Snug. It's snug fit. Um, get to the get to the bottom of the flute there unscrew to tighten the just all I have to do is snug the does the the end mill doesn't have to be tightened down tight and just make sure I get off the finger yep so we're ready to go here and I'm gonna back it out on the cross slide and we're going to zoom in a little bit here so you can kind of see what's going on. I'm going to try to zoom in anyway. And this is my uh, um, air bearing that I made. And it just flipped the lever and moves it into the wheel. Flip the lever back and moves it away from the wheel. So we'll start out by touching off here and seeing where we're at. Move it in and then adjust it into the wheel until it just touches. I'm just going to move back a little bit on the flute. And this is metric on, these marks are metrics, but I don't, I'm not going to uh, any uh, dimension anyway. So I'm just going to take one mark here, whatever the mark is. And I like to take two or three passes on each loop. This is a diamond wheel. A high speed end mill. Okay, next. And the next end or next flute, last last flute. Pretty simple. And if I want to, I could go in and do the secondary by moving. Uh, my wife was leaving. Uh, that's what the noise is. Um, 
Okay, I think I got all the flutes. Did I go enough? Doesn't look like I went enough. This angle is going to take a little more. It's going to take a little more off. That chips are pretty. Uh, it's not just dull. It's chipped. So I'm going to move in, in another mark here. But what I was saying is uh, to grind the secondary. Just move it down. And I just give it another 5 degrees, so I go down 10 degrees, so basically you're just lowering it down the wheel, so it's cutting into the, it's giving you a 10 degree uh, relief angle. Now, that was one more mark on the travel on this table. With his head I can change the angle too uh, for doing the ends of the end mill. I'll have to set up and show you how I'm doing the ends of the end mills but I don't have any that I'm going to do right now. I just had a, a few 3 8 that I wanted to touch up so I just figured I'd make a quick video. I need to turn my air pressure up just a little bit. Yeah, oh yeah, there we go. It was starting to drag a little bit. I had the, the air pressure went down. I turned my air compressor off so it wouldn't kick in. So. Is that the last one? I lost track here. Yeah, it was. Alright, let's see what we got here. Still a little ragged right there. Just in one spot. Yeah, I'm going to take another mark. This one definitely should actually have the secondary ground on it, too. Naturally, I pick a end mill that's really chipped up <laughs> to video. Otherwise, I, if they weren't, if they're not chipped, it only takes about 10 minutes and you're done. Not even 10 minutes. I'm going to take a couple more passes. I want to... One more. One more time down that flute. It's not taking much now. Barely touching it. Okay, next. I do like how this air bearing, uh, flipping that lever forward comes back to uh, the same setting every time so you don't have to worry about uh, your end mills running concentric unless of course you went and took one pass on one flute on one of the flutes and then the rest of them you uh, took two or three passes then I suppose it would uh, well it would definitely run out But if you take a couple passes, it, usually it's anything after that, it's, it's just barely. You know, the only reason I'm doing that is because of these chips. There we go. 
That's what I'm talking about. They're gone. All right. Well, all you gotta do is unload it, and you got an end mill to sharpen. So, um, I've gone down to a three sixteenths diameter sharpening. So, the three sixteenths diameter, you don't have much room for your finger to to ride on. So, you have to. I have to. I would have to reset the finger, but I'm just doing three eighths right now. So, so anyway, that's how it's done. That's how I'm doing it anyway. And it seems to work out pretty darn good. Uh, looks like the video would have been a little fuzzy, isn't it? I may have to do it again. I'll come back and do another one. Okay, this end mill is just a little bit dull. It's not all chipped up. And uh, we're going to sharpen it up. So, use, get it on the finger. I got the, it's all set up for 3 eighths right now. And actually, you could do three eighths, two flute, or four, or three flute, or four flute. It wouldn't, wouldn't matter. I'm just getting the finger, getting it, the distance set out. Tighten that up. Make sure I come off of the finger. Yep. Finger is the uh, and it holds the end mill, the flute that you're sharpening, parallel to the everything. So I'm going to back away. Turn the wheel on, I'm going to move in here, and I'm going to move in until I just touch. The wheel is it's set so that it's five, it comes into the wheel at about five degree uh, angle that it's going to put on for the primary angle. Shouldn't have to take much off this end mill. I'm going to go one mark. One more time. I like to do two or three passes per flute. I should put some magic, or uh, I'm going to take and put a grease pencil on there so you can kind of see, so you can differentiate, or you can see what I'm, I'm going to go around it and blacken it out so you can see what the primary is looking like. It may not be showing up on the camera. Alright, so last flute here. Now, actually, um, this one should have the secondary ground also because you want to keep that primary about uh, no, no bigger than like 50 thousandths wide. But I've been cheating and, and letting them go a little bit wider. So, and they've been cutting all right. So, so I'm not going to worry about doing primary yet. The next time I sharpen this end mill, I will. I'll, I'll adjust the wheel up. Uh, and I can't remember what it was. It was like five hundred thousandths or something like that that it works out for me. To set that up, to set that up, you just take and uh, set your uh, protractor to uh, five degrees. Set it on a surface plate. You know what the uh, spindle height is, uh, and then scribe a line on there at your spindle height. Or not the spindle height. The, I'm sorry, the air bearing height. And I wrote that on there. 
5 inches, 255 and 8 tenths. So from here up to here is 2 inches 500 or 255. Then you set that on the table and you bring the table in and you move the head up and down until this wheel contacts it right on that on that uh, scribe line and that'll give you about a five degree uh, primary angle which I have on this oh this one, this one, this one turned out really nice there no nicks no nothing on it so and actually when you do this you should take a um, piece of soft copper and go down the flutes to strip the the little bit of a burr. I'll get uh, my my little and all it is all I use is a is a piece of pipe that's uh, just hammered it flat on the end and what you do is you just go down the flutes and what that does is it knocks off that little bit of a burr that uh, grinding puts on it and uh, it'll it'll stay sharp and longer. If you don't do that, um, it they tend to not stay as sharp as long. So you want to do that, especially if you grind a lot off. So, but I can feel that this is a nice sharp end mill. So anyway, another one done. I got about uh, a half a dozen to do and then uh, put her back on the shelf, clean it up, and put her back on the shelf. I don't have any, like I say, I don't have any ends to do. Uh, basically what I do is I set this at uh, five degrees and then it's a, put a fence on here and I use my 5C collet block and, I, and uh, with a stop on the side and I get to set the wheel to the center and then I can do any size end mill then because it's to the center of that and basically you just come in and move the table back and forth and burp, burp. <laughs> it when I, someday when I'm doing them I'll video that too and, and uh, uh, if I chip the end real bad I just take a chop saw chop it off hand grind this back and then come in and and uh, use this uh, setup to redo the ends of the end mill. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm going to go ahead and finish up my end mills. And uh, I just thought I'd give you a quick update on uh, what I'm doing. It, the weather's been crappy, so uh, today's supposed to be nice. I got to get out and I got some fencing to do, so. Uh, of course it gets nice out where I don't have to wear a parka <laughs> or a heavy coat uh, and I can get by with a sweater. I'm going to go do some fencing. So until next time, catch you later.